Yo, morning. So we are starting a new project and we're going to show you today how to completely and utterly strip this room out. So the whole room is going to be completely renovated um, from start to finish. So we've got two bedrooms to do. So we've got this one and next door, amongst other things on this project. But first things first, we're going to have to strip out all the wardrobes. They've got to go. I've got Jack with me. Jack is on wallpaper stripping. And then we're gonna prep because we are rewiring this property as well. I've got loads to do. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. Link is in the corner. Get that smashed out for me. Let's get stuck into the video. So first things first, we've completely emptied the room bar the bed. We can't take that out at the minute because we have nowhere for that to put it. So we've took all the furniture out. We've gone through with the customer where they want things. There is a socket down there. That socket there is gonna be a new one, a little bit higher. And there is that socket that's going to be sort of there. Also, the light fitting is going to be moved into the centre, so it's going to be a little bit more this way. Um, it is wallpapered everywhere, and I mean everywhere. So what you're going to need for that is one of these, a wallpaper stripper. So we, you can buy really, really expensive ones. This is a standard one, which you can get from a retailer that is pretty much in every single town. You need one of these, you need a jack, you need one of those, and you're gonna need a scraper. So Jack is loosening up all the adhesive underneath, and then he's gonna be slowly scraping, 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 living his best life, doing that all day, enjoying. So for me, I've gotta take down these curtains first before they get ruined, because they're gonna still be in use after this is done for a little while until the windows and shutters and all that lot are sorted. First job for me is to drink me brew. Beautiful. The other thing we've noticed is this radiator is leaking. It's leaking out the side and it's stained all the carpet. Now, just to point out, the carpet is all being completely replaced. We don't have to worry about that. That's fine, it's going. We haven't got to worry. So one of the other jobs, we're gonna be chasing all these pipes into the wall, getting rid of this boxing in here. That all leads up. I'm just gonna point out, it is a bungalow, so it couldn't be nicer. The radiator is gonna be changed as well for a double um, because the client likes to keep the room nice and warm. I came here previously to test the electrical installation and it, it really did fail. So we're gonna be completely rewiring it, but doing it in phases. So we're gonna put this room on a radial circuit, which then we're gonna get this room completed before we start on the next room in there, which will make life a lot easier for the client because then they've got a nice safe haven, beautiful, lovely to escape to. Doors will be replaced. That one, that one, oak doors are going in. Used to have an air, an air system, air heating system. That's going, so that can be blocked. Doesn't need it. So it is getting, Jack is getting really hot in here. It is getting really hot in here. So it's open these windows because it's gonna be ridiculous. Ridiculous for me to work in here. And uh, let's get started stripping out. Right, curtain's done, wardrobe's next. Okay, it's time to get these wardrobe doors out. Now, most of these sliding wardrobe doors will run on a track system, one at the bottom, one at the top. So in theory, it should be able to lift up and swing out. Wish me luck. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip all of this out going to stack it over there and then you need to grab yourself a jack and then jack will take them outside and stack them neatly ready to go into the skip Okay, so doors out, pretty successful, I might add. So, and a couple of those, there's a little crack in the glass and need to make sure that when you're carrying those out, they don't splinter or shatter. One way to do that, you can put some tape around them to make sure that it doesn't damage any further. So these are a pretty standard issue wardrobe system um, with no backs on. So what we're gonna do is gonna take all these rails out, get them out, bag them all up, and then we'll see if you can start seeing bits like this. We'll flick all these off and try and actually undo it because 
There's no point going like a madman and just smashing everything with a hammer because if you do, all you've got to create basically is loads more work, loads more mess uh, for yourself. You don't need to do that. We'll take all these apart properly, all the shelves off, end panel, um, and then there's a, a plinth at the top that will need to come down. But yeah, always, always take them out properly because you will save yourself a lot of clean up because if I smash that with a hammer, I've then got to hoover everything all down here, um, pick all the little bits up, it goes everywhere, chance of injury, all that sort of stuff. And no one needs that, do they? No one needs that in their life when you can just be a good boy and do it properly. So let's get it stripped out. More hangers. Oh, I knew I'd left me net somewhere. Jack is doing a pretty decent job, I'm going to be honest, getting on with that, it's a horrible job. Jack, are you enjoying your job? I'm loving it. Living the dream? Living the dream. So, so we stripped it all out, um, pipe work. So these pipes are still going to be within the wardrobes, I think. I just need to check with Steve, um, because Steve is making them, whether they're going to be boxed off the wall or what. Um, but down here, so down here we've got the pipes that... Essentially, from that point there, would need to be chased into the wall if they can stay because the radiators themselves. So, this will be my flow and return, and there's a radiator on the other side of the room which will be exactly the same. So, the problem is, we don't want to be killing off all of the water feeds uh, to that room as well because that's going to be very, very cold. Architrave and skirting board all to come off, so that will be all done in a moment. I've got a new wrecking bar, a new wrecking bar which is supposed to be amazing for this um so yeah it's a pretty pretty decent start and like i say if you do that this way by stripping it all out there's not loads and loads of little bits and chippings of because these are all chipboard and once you start smashing that out it goes the bits go everywhere uh, there's a few little caps and stuff down there but that's fine but all that carpet's going anyway it makes no difference um so yeah pretty pretty decent at the minute so we're going to get this skirting and architrave off get that all done and dusted and let's show you this new wrecking bar. So here it is, this is the new wrecking bar from Hold to Force. Um, so I was a little bit skeptical, I'm gonna be honest, because of this point here. So this nut, I thought, is that gonna be weak? <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually one solid piece of cast, which is what I actually thought, wow, what the hell. So it's super fine thread, so it gives you a really, really strong leverage area so it's not going to break on you so don't panic right but what i really like about this because i've been using this on various different things recently so i had to lean up a cooker um and i was tight angled so i could just alter it to whatever i wanted uh also i built some wardrobes myself over the weekend at my own house and uh to level the two sets up i just didn't want to go too mad i use this so I literally leaned up, oh, dreamy, absolutely dreamy. So yeah, so do you want to check them out? Really good bit of kit. So we're gonna use this now to remove all the skirting board. So like I say, we are gonna improve the property. So just try and be careful with what you're doing, all right? Don't go in it like a madman. Okay, so we've now removed all the skirting board that I need to right this second. There is obviously a little bit there, but Jack's faffing about, you know what he's like, faffing about up there. Um, and taking an absolute lifetime to get on with that. So 
all the rubbish is there. So I'll get round to it. So we're now obviously very conscious of making sure that you are keeping moving all the time. Now, one of the things that we're doing now, and I'm going to show you just here, is the radiator. So we're going to take the radiator off together because it's going to be replaced. It's corroded on the ends anyway, and also the client likes it warm, as I mentioned earlier. And um, we're going to put a double one on. Um, also, we've got to chase the pipe work in, but first things first, they're going to show you the easiest way on how to remove a radiator. Because we are in the depth of winter, you need to make sure that the radiators are turned off. So making sure your valves are closed, which we closed earlier on, and this side is obviously closed off. Beware, sometimes they fail and they don't actually shut off. This radiator was piping hot when I came in, now it's lovely and cool. So what we're going to do, we have got a rubble sack, which is that one, a rubble sack. We've also got fill, I believe it's fill. Yeah, don't know why they call it fill. Fill the bucket, bongiorno. We've also got a wet back. So the easiest way of doing it, I find, is by using the rubble sack, because make sure, it sounds obvious. So no idea why that didn't record that, so I'm going to do that all over again. We have got two carpet protectors right down here, so courtesy of the Nikolos. I stole one from him, he stole one from me, here we are, and we are there where we are. So I know the carpet's been replaced, but it always looks better to leave some carpet protector down because it just looks better, it's more professional. And also, there will be black sludge in the bottom of these once you've drained it all down, and when you lift it up and off here, chances are you're gonna get a little bit on the floor. And you don't want that, because that's horrible. So I'm gonna get ourselves set up. Grips, adjustable. So if you get your rubble sack ground, tuck it up the back, like so. Obviously it's a pressurised system, so you will get water straight away. And you'll let it drain out. It takes a while. Now once it's took the initial pressure off, and then open up the valve, it will flow out way more. Once you get going. Okay, so one of the things on here is this valve, I'll bring you in in a minute, is still dripping. So we need to make sure we've got a stop end on that. Um, but it's now drained down, we use the hose Use the hoover to drain it all out, it's actually a lot faster. Now really need to make sure that you shut that valve again, because if you don't, you're going to be in a pickle when you turn it round, because obviously all the black goop is going to go out that way. So we're going to lift it up and flip it round. Okay. Now as you so don't open that valve, no, you're going to, that's it. So lift it up, okay, and then you're going to lift your end slightly higher. Lift yours up a tiny bit, tiny bit, mate. Lift yours up, 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 up. Bring the rest of that into there. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, let me apply it. So lean it back onto my shoulder. So just, just oh, lean it back. Yeah, no, 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 no not, not quite right. Oh, I'll just spin it all the way around. I've just got to put my thumb over the end of it. And then flip it all the way up. That's the, the best way of doing that. Okay, I'm going to take that straight out. Okay, so radiator's off. That's good. Nice job. There's no black marks on any of the carpet. So we emptied that. So as, as you just saw, Jack lifted it up, got it into the bag of dreams, emptied that out. So if you can just see, there is a little drip. And that is because that is not shutting off properly. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some blank caps on. Now I could have a proper cap, but... If you haven't got a proper cow, I'll show you how to go about it. We'll sort that out in two seconds. Then we'll get these brackets off the wall, and then we're ready pretty much. So then Jack can carry on stripping all the wallpaper out and get that all gone. And I can get the skirting board off, but the pipe work, I'm going to have to figure out a way. So yes, we can box in all of that. When we're doing the wardrobes, that's fine. But I've got to then think about next door as well, because obviously the radiator that is... As you can see from the pipe work down there, it feeds off into that room. So the flow and return are connected into both of those rooms. Fan Dabby Dosa. Right, okay, so we're going to now cap this radiator off because also if for some reason this room drops below freezing, that valve technically will open anyway, which is not very good. So you need to have a bit of copper pipe. This is my hoosive. 
don't need it that much. So we've put that into two halves. You're going to need some push fit stop ends. And the reason why, yes, you can buy caps, but I haven't got any caps with me, so this is another way of doing it. You're going to need new nuts and an olive, and that will do you. So you could use some paste around there, but there's literally no point because I'm going to be chopping all this off. And a quick tighten up. And that'll do it. Right, so I've just been called out to a bathroom job that's so I've got a bath that's leaking apparently. So we did the bathroom oh a good few years ago now, uh, and randomly it's decided to start leaking. So I'm gonna jump inside, go and have a little look and see what that is going on. Right, I'm back in the van now, and I nearly gave up. In fairness, I had to cut all of the end panels off. So basically the bath is sort of, it's got three different end panels on it. Um, so I had to cut, cut it off, which took me an absolute age, in fairness. The customer's a great, great guy as well. So we're having a bit of a natter about different things. Um, and yeah, I could not find it for love and money until I filled the bath up and I just leant on the pipe, on the waste pipe. And as I leant on the pipe, it then allowed the water to come through. So really, really strange one. So I've tightened everything up, ran everything. Everything seems fine. I know I haven't put the bath panel back on. And the reason why, because I want, I want the client to um, run it for a few days, make sure they're happy with everything. And then I'll come back and I'll seal it all up. So yes, another job done. And uh, let's get on to the next one. So while Jack is doing a fabulous job doing the old wallpaper stripping, and that's wallpaper stripping, not actually stripping, because that was <laughs> weird. Um, I've been back to go and do a call out in fairness. I'll be up. I've done one. But here we are. But we're back. I'm getting on with the wall chasing now. Um, so I'm going to go and show you how exactly I'll go about using that. Just about to mount the back box. So I used to just do the single entry uh, on those. But now I've gone reverted back to the double the double entry. The reason why, because what I tend to find with a lot of sockets now, especially if they go with USBs and all the rest of it, is that there's not that much room. And seems to be on certain manufacturers, they seem to have pinched, especially if they have a flat plate, for example, it's more pushed backwards than it is forwards. So what I found by going back to how I used to do it many years ago, it's actually ended up giving me more space to work with. So let's get this fixed up on here so I can show you a bit closer on the chase. Here is the chase that we've done. So we've got one there and one's gonna be basically next to that socket there for either side of the bed. Um, and we've chased all the way up to that point there. Now, like I said before, it's a bungalow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill through that point all the way up into the loft, which is fine. We've got our box mounted up with our level lines. So we're gonna, that's gonna sit in there. Now, I could use the spit nailer and we'll get that out in a minute and see what that's like. But the idea is that I'm gonna put one cable through here, one out there, and then coil them up so they're out of the way. So when Sean comes to do the plastering or Lou, they're not gonna moan at me if it's really long. Now, it's always best again, use your mat, put that down, stop any of the bits. Now it's really important when using that piece of kit, which is absolutely amazing, a real, real money saver. But if you haven't got one of them, it's not sponsored by Matabo at all. Uh, I wish it was, because they could send me a new one by all means. Really, really important, and I mean this, is to use your PPE on this. So dust mask, and I've got my glasses on my noggin, and they don't stay on there. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, they just live on there, but no, do wear them and also ear protection because it is really loud and although it does take 99% of the dust away you don't really know what it is so just just good practice get your dust mask on the go and ear defenders because it's it's loud what can I say it's loud so rip through there and uh, we'll get the spit nailer on we'll do the banding strap so I'm going to get myself all prepped and all ready get that side done and then there's one here to do in a moment because it's solid floors now, if you were doing a rewire and it was wooden floors, what I'd suggest to do is lifting up a few boards and rodding through and doing it that way, but this is solid floors in here, so we can't do that, we have another option. So, Jack has got on with 
all this side. So it's got all this side pretty much sorted now. That's got to work around the corner. Um, it is still really, really hot, steamy, and I don't, I don't care for it much. Um, but I'm going to go and jump into the van and go and get a spit nailer. Oh, shout out as well, customer points. So the customer has kept me and Jack well topped up with the tea. And it's good tea as well. Actually good tea. Yorkshire, I like it. Mm. Definitely a Yorkshire brand, that. Definitely. Naturally, it is horrible weather. Why wouldn't it be? So we need that. Let's go. Okay, so we've now got the last chase sorted-ish. So we're just gonna put the uh, banding strap and stuff in. We've got the last few to do, but I thought I'd show you. Just in case you haven't seen this. So you get your banding strap and cut it off. Five holes is what you want. Five holes is what you want. Let's double check that then. Um, form it over slightly, so it's nothing too you know, jazzy. And then you fire that in. So depending on what your substrate is, um, is whether you go straight into the block, which is fine, it will do that if it holds, or straight into the mortar line. Now the mortar line on here is really, really solid. So I've used the mortar line. Um, and I space it out roughly two uh, courses of blocks per fixing, but you might find as you go, you might need a little bit more, which is fine. Again, just put it in. Now I have fixed some of the back boxes on, I'll put the spit nailer down. Um, I fixed some of the back boxes like this one. I fixed, I thought I'd try it with the spit nailer. And yes, it's held nice and tight, but also I thought because of its block, I see how I got on with that one because I've got a decent fix in, but it sort of didn't fill me full of confidence on there. So I went back to traditional standard. Now, I say traditional, but these are the plugs that I use. So these are Fisher six mils. Um, they're duo, duo line, duo powers, I believe they are. They're absolutely wicked, and they hold like oh, they, they just they're just amazing as a kit. I've been using them for a long time now, and I highly highly rate them. And also, I've used five mils, five by fifties, to really hammer those home. And once they're in, they are not going anywhere. They can be bashed around by the plasterers, aka Lou or Sean. To their heart's content and those boxes aren't going anywhere out of level because they are oh, spot on. Now I've drilled through so I've got my access through and to the loft space so that one, that one and that one so they're all sorted. Jack is still on the scraper so he is living his best life over there. So this one's done so we've got partially some of this one but he's now come around to the, I'm not sure it's like analytic and uh, whatever it's the old school wallpaper on that one and it's not coming off that well um so yeah so that is fun isn't it so i've got these to sort out the light switch i've got a chase um, because it's not staying in that position it's been lowered down to uh part m of the building regs now for those of you the way i the way i remember part m is for disability access basically and it's 1200 to the top 450 to the bottom and because we're rewiring the whole house and it's a bungalow, um, people with mobility issues and stuff like that, just blast through following that and it makes a huge difference. Because if you are, you know, a senior year, um, it makes a big difference. You know, you haven't got to bend down so much. It's not compulsory, so you don't have to. It's only compulsory on new builds or new extensions, things like that. But it's obviously always put out to the client for us as well, what do they want us to do? And uh, yeah. Most of them always go, yeah, just get on with that, get it to part M, let's let's comply with all, all regulations. And then the last thing we've got to do in here, for me, well, lecky wise anyway, is we to move that further down that way because it's a little bit too to this end and the client wants it moving to the centre. But again, what I'm going to do is we'll kill all the powers off, that'll be tomorrow now. Um, we'll kill all the powers off and isolate those off in the roof and then eventually they'll be dead and gone. Um, so we'll put them in some Wago boxes and, and get rid. But it will mean that this dark room is going to be very dark. So it means new lights. New lights to be fitted, well, installed for the old sight lights. That's exciting, isn't it? So stay tuned for tomorrow and you'll see those. Um, so yeah, so we're at that stage now. I'm going to mark out for the, for the light over there. Uh, the light switch and we'll get that one chased and then that's the electrical chasing done but i can't do the pipes because 
Jack's still working in that area. And I don't think he'll appreciate me getting the grinder right above his head. I don't think he'll like that. I think he might have a few words to say about it. Right, last chase is done over where Jack is. So got the light switch all chased in. So that's all ready to go. So we've got that chase done. So that, where well, I lost all track. That chase done. The one where Jack is over there. That one. And that one all sorted. So Jack's got the wallpaper stripped this way, round a little bit over the head in the in the reveals, but at the bottom, um, the bottoms are done, which means I can get the pipes chased in tomorrow. So that's those sorted. Um, so yeah, quite a big day. So in fairness, there was a socket down there as well. So a socket down there that's no longer needed. So that needs to make sure we kill that off. I believe that one over there is just a spur off from the room behind. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, so day one, we've managed to get a hell of a lot done. So we need to have a bit of a square up, a bit of a hoover round. So as you've probably gathered, when I'm doing the chasing, you try and minimize the dust as much as you can and all the mess. But what I tend to do is hoover up as you go in. So as soon as you've done one chase, get it all hoovered, get it all squared away. Uh, because then you're not treading in it, especially with Jack stripping all this off because it's sticky and you don't want to be then treading that all into the carpet, although I know it's going, but it's better to just try and stay tidy all the time, when you, especially when you're doing this, because they're not changing overnight, are they? They're not going to be done, so you want to make sure it's nice and neat. So we've got a little square up to do, then tomorrow we'll be draining down, and now it's a good habit as well at the end of the day is making some notes on what you need to, one, to get done, and two, if there's any parts and stuff that you need to get sorted for the next day, because it's something that's overlooked massively, and make sure nothing's forgotten, because you can't remember everything, it's not normal if you do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you subscribe. The link is in the corner, turn your notifications on, and join me tomorrow when we get on with chasing out some more stuff, the pipes draining down, and also how to run a new radial circuit for the bedroom.